okay. That was really heavy. Struck the ground behind the golf ball. Why was that? Let's have another look. That was absolutely ripped. What is the difference between those two shots? Why is it that sometimes you strike the ground behind the golf ball, horrible strikes, versus striking that beautiful ball first and you get that lovely flight? What is the difference between the two? In this week's training, I'm gonna cover exactly why you strike the ground behind the golf ball occasionally or maybe even way, way too much. Before we do, my name is Danny Moore. Welcome to the channel. If this is one of your first videos, please consider subscribing. I release videos just like this one every week to try and help you improve your game. So what are you doing if you strike the ground behind the golf ball? Well, this is exactly what's happening. If you're striking the ground behind the golf ball, what we tend to see with too many golfers is this. They're coming into impact here. The club is releasing like this and the club grounds behind the golf ball. You'll notice also when you hear is it's very, very straight, okay? So the lead arm and club are almost kind of fully extended at this stage and you're releasing it here. The best ball strikers, you, these are the images that you'll see. The best ball strikers, you'll see that their weight is on their lead foot a hell of a lot. The angle of their shaft, or their hands are a long way ahead of the golf ball. The club strikes the ball and actually, then it strikes the ground. That is what we're after. How do you go about doing it without making it too complicated? Because I see a lot of people trying this, but they still struggle. So what we're going to do now is focus on how do you get this beautiful shaft lean here as opposed to the releasing of the club here where it gets extended and behind the golf ball. The first thing to do is you've got to understand how the wrists work. So what I see with a lot of golfers is this. They get what's called a flicking motion. They get this position here where they start to flick through the impact area here. And the more you get this flicking motion, the more you ground the, uh, the club behind the golf ball. It's a weak shot as well. And you fat it on your own, you can also thin it. The reason why they do this is because they flick it away on the way back. So they get this flick away on the way back. And because you flicked it away here, the body responds by flicking it the other way. So if you flick it one way, you simply flick it the other way. It's as simple as that. It's like if you threw a ball, if you flick this, you're gonna flick it this way. You need to reverse that process. And this is counterintuitive. You wanna get the hands here at impact, but do you know what? You start the opposite way in the takeaway. Let me explain, watch this. I call it drag. What you wanna do is get the back of the club. I want you to imagine you're going to do this, and I'm showing this in a way that's visual so you can exaggerate this. Drag the club away on the way back here, the back of the club, drag it away. Now look at this, there's been no flick at this stage. You're dragging the club away here, you get to the top. Because it hasn't really flicked or anything, it then flicks the other way on the way down. So you get the flick on the way down as opposed to the flick on the way back. And beautifully for us, that flick is the opposite and it helps you to get that type of angle through the impact area. Let's have a look at this in action. So we're gonna drag it in order to lag it. So watch this, we're gonna drag back with the back of the club here. Drag, 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 drag. And that is an absolutely beautiful flight. Okay, so, this, so let's do that one more time. So we're getting ourselves set here. We know we need to get the wrists in a much better position, so we do the opposite. We drag here to get that angle on the way through. If you flick it here, you will flick it on the way through. Let's have another look at this get the back of the club, feel like it's in a sense dragging on the back of the ground here. It's so counterintuitive, isn't it? Because look, you're seeing this horrible impact position almost here. We don't want that, but it won't end up like that because it will reverse on the way down. This is the first thing to do. Back of the club, drag it back, and then rip it through. So you've got the idea of this, the wrist working. Now, how can make you make this even more efficient? The second thing that could really lead to this kind of releasing here is, is great, you've got the wrist motion, but if you don't move the body or rotate the body in the right way on the way through, that will cause major issues. A lot of people who get into this kind of release motion here where they hit behind, 
their bodies are also very straight. They get very what you call square on. They're not naturally rotating through the golf ball. This is an issue because if you don't rotate through the ball, there's no room, so the body kind of freezes, stops, and you simply get this release through the impact area. What you've got to do from here is from this position, you've got to work out a way on getting yourself rotating comfortably and easily through the ball. Here's how I recommend it, and it works brilliantly well for also the drag motion. What I want you to do here is this. I want you to practice, in a sense, getting both heels working far more effectively initially as a drill. Start ahead here, so you're kind of, in a sense, the right heel's off the ground here, and we're going to look. As that right heel pushes down, we're naturally, it's just a motion. Do you watch this? One, two. You drag it back here, and as you then put that left foot down or the heel down towards the ground here, you create rhythm. That there, as that goes down, it naturally look, opens up the body. That opening up of the body creates natural momentum and it helps you to naturally get onto your lead foot and finish through. Remember, the golf swing came first, coaches like me came second. You do not have to try to get onto your left side or your lead side. You don't have to try and get the hands ahead. All those things actually, to be honest with you, they push achieving that further and further away. You get there naturally by getting motion here. We're dragging it back with the back of the club on the ground. That heel's coming up, and as we push it down, just the mere fat look of pushing down the ground creates the rotation, creates the space, and helps us get through the golf ball. Let's have a look at this. So we get ourselves set here. We're now gonna sense drag back and literally come through. And because I'm pushing through, I naturally finish in a much, much better position, turn through to the target. Let's have another look at that in slow motion. The rain starts to come down. I'm getting absolutely soaking wet for you guys. Who cares? So we've got those two things mainly here. We're getting the drag back on the ground. We want to create this wrist action. How do we create it? How do we keep it? We create it by getting it dragged back on the way back here, forcing the flick on the way through. And then to help maintain it even more so, we've got to have proper rotation. Rotation is created by the feet. So what you want to do here is again, just work on that. We start here, we drag it back here. We put that foot down. Just look at this, as soon as I put that foot down, my hips start to rotate. That rotation helps naturally to keep this angle. Without that, if, it doesn't, if we don't get rotation, there's no room. We'll create room in a different way by standing up and that releases the club too early and gets you hitting the ground behind the golf ball. Let's have a look at that one more time in action and then we'll summarize. So, I get myself dragging back, push forward first, drag that back there, and then put it back down on the ground. So let's summarize two major things. What causes the ground behind the golf ball? Well, it's very simple. You release the club here too early, you get very extended, you're gonna to start to strike the ground behind the ball. We've gotta basically get this shaft lean ahead here quite naturally we've got to get our weight on our front foot please do not try to get that there and um, one of the downsides to in a sense trying to force this what i found is this it gets people chopping down on the golf ball that is not what we need at all getting this motion is should be fairly natural but as you know it's not so we've got to kind of go through these exercises so you've got the drag of the back of the club here and then just simply hit you flick it early you'll flick it on the way down Leave the flick till later, and you'll get it on the way down. Maintain that motion. How do we do that? Well, you've got to get those, that body rotating out of the way. It can't rotate if you don't move. So, simple action, you can always calm this down. Move onto the heel here, drag it back, that heel's off. Push that back down, that helps the rotation, and then just fully commit to the shot. And away we go. I'm getting soaking, love to shoot this video for you. So, any questions, leave them in the comments box below. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you're new to the channel, maybe subscribe. But until next week, I'm getting soaking wet. 
Have a great golfing week. <laughs>